Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. Today we're going to take a look at building uh, the cover and closure piece for uh, the headphone project, the NeoPixel headphone project. So I have my, I'm wearing them right now, my favorite headphones, awesome stuff. If you are making this project, I wanted to make a Layer by Layer tutorial on how to set up your dual extrusion print operation job using Simplify 3D. So it's actually, there's a little bit of cool tips that I have for you guys so you can get the most cleanest possible print. Um, so let's take a look at it here. So of course we're using Simplify 3D, which is my favorite preferred slicer for doing any 3D printing type job. And they have a really nice uh, dual extrusion wizard, which we'll go over. So if you haven't set up uh, your printer using uh, Simplify 3D, it's pretty easy. Um, under help, there is a configuration assistant. I'll go ahead and click on that. And this will uh, set you up with the profile that they have built in. So there's all sorts of different dual extruder printers that are capable of dual extruding. Um, we got here the Creator Bot. Um, we have the FlashForge Creator Pro, which is the one I'm using. And then we also have like the Replicator 2X, the Rep1, and a couple other dual extruder type printers. So let's go ahead and get started with um, selecting the printer that we have. So in my case, it's the FlashForge Creator Pro. So I'll hit next. And now it's, it's set and I'll hit finish. Okay, so there's our process. Right now, uh, these are all the settings, of course, for, that are sort of default to it, but we, we, we're not gonna use this one. We just need to set that up. We'll delete the process and we'll create a new process. So the first thing we need to do is grab our STL files. So uh, in the Thingiverse page, it comes with all the files. Here's the two cases, those aren't dual extruded, but the cover is dual extruded. So this first piece here is the cover, which has like a middle piece and a, and a, and a missing center piece. And then the second piece is, of course, the, the diffuser. So let's go ahead and, and select those and just drop them into the models window. And they're gonna come in like this. So they're not oriented in the right way and they're not aligned in the center. So what we can do is select the two here and then go to edit and then click on group section selection. So that's gonna create a group for us. The next thing we need to do is go back up to edit and click on align selected model origin. And what that's gonna do is combine the two parts together and align them at the origin center of their origins. So now it looks like it's just one part, but that's because it's seamless, right? So if I, if I hide one of the layers, you can see it's still two different pieces, just looks like it's one. Next thing we gotta do is start orienting it. So if I double click on this, I can start doing like, like all these different types of things. So I hit reset position. A much quicker way to do that is to go to edit and then click on place surface on bed. And when you do that, it, ha it doesn't do anything, but it puts you in a mode where if whatever you roll over, you're gonna see these little triangle faces. So if you click on one of them, it'll actually orient that to this to flat on the bed. So what was it, command L? So I can do command L on my keyboard, select that, and then now it's flat in the right orientation on the bed. Next thing we can do is just hit this button here, center and arrange, and that arranges it into the center. Nice. So that's pretty much all we need to do for setting it up and then uh, orient it on the bed. The next thing we need to do is create our profile for it. So what we'll do is we'll come up to uh, tools and then click on dual extrusion wizard. So since we created our profile, we, we use the configure, uh, configure assistant thing. And now we have our thing here, FlashForge Creator Pro. So I'm gonna click on that and then we can name the process group. I'll just call it, uh, dual printed cover. That's nice, so we know what it is. And then I'll use the material configuration of PLA because we're actually using black PLA for the outside and then a glow in the dark PLA for the, the fusion part. So the next thing we'll see is a color one right extruder, color two left extruder. The left extruder has the active cooling fan, the fan blower right on the extruder the right side doesn't have it yet. This is by default. So what we, what we what I recommend is on the left side extruder to have the the piece with the most detail. So that's going to be this piece, the cover. So we we need to do is we need to flip these around. So you can click on a click on the model and then the model name and then click on one of these arrows to push it. So I'm going to push it that way and then I'll click on the diffuser and then move it that way. So now we need to make sure that our material is loaded in the right extruder, right? So black is gonna be loaded in the right extruder that has that fan blower. 
And then the left extruder is going to have the glow in the, the glow in the dark PLA or transparent PLA or white PLA, whatever you choose, it should be a lighter color than the black, of course, because you're going to diffuse the LEDs, right? So now we have that set up and we can click OK. So now that is now that we have our process listed here, we can double click on any colors and then we have to modify some of the settings. So the first thing I'll do is I'll change my extrusion width to auto because that seems to be a good job. Retraction is set pretty well, so I'm gonna leave that by default. The next thing is pretty important. I need to change the layer height. So the layer height, I wanna use 150 microns, so that's 0.15 millimeters. Oops, let me open that again. Back to layer. So there it is, it's set to 15, 0.15 millimeters. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the top solid layers from three to six and the bottom solid layers from three to six. And I'll leave the outlined peri perimeter shells to two. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is change the first layer height to 100%. This is gonna make sure that the layer height isn't too squished to the bottom. It's gonna be nice uh, and, and, um, and as thin as possible. And that's what we want. The next thing is the additions. Addition is where we have our ooze shield. So at the, at the at default dual extruding, it's pretty good idea to use a dual uh, to use an ooze shield. An ooze shells, if you roll over it, it tells you creates a shell around your model that will help prime the extruder, and it, it causes it so it doesn't ooze a lot. So hence the name ooze shield, right? But one thing about this is that the print is so minimal that we actually can create a custom ooze shield using the scrim and the the, the scrim the skirt and brim feature. So that's what we're gonna do. The ooze shield is gonna make it so it prints a, a perimeter all the way up to the to the whole thing. So what we're doing is we're making our own ooze shield, but we're gonna cut it out at a certain height. So in this case, we're gonna go to skirt layers and we're gonna change one to 10, because that's how many layers uh, it only needs to, to dual extrude. So we only need that much material. So we can actually save some material by doing this. Next thing I'll do is it'll change the offset from the part from four to eight, and just doubling that. And then I'll leave the skirt outlines to two. Infill is set to 20%. The over the uh, the outline overfill, I like to make it a little bit higher. So I'll change from 20 to 35. And the uh, in, the extrusion, the infill extrusion width can stay at 100%. Supports, we don't need supports for this. Temperatures, in my case, because this part is so small, I do have a heated bed, but I actually don't need it. So I'm gonna save a lot of time here. I don't know, a couple minutes or so, but I'm gonna put zero. Save some some uh, some time there, and this is where we need to change the extruder temperature. The extruder temperature right now for the left and right is set to 230, and when I've tried that, it actually makes a little bit of a messy uh, job, a lot more messier than this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to 190, which is pretty low, but actually pretty good for this type of part. And then I'll make sure to change the right one to 190 as well. So hit enter there. So now we have our right and our left set to 190. Our heated bed is set to zero. And then everything else is okay. Cooling is fine. That second layer is where the active cooling fan turns on. Our G code looks okay. Script's okay. This dual, the dual print speed, the default printing speed is set to 60. And the movement, the travel rate is, is set to uh, 70, which is pretty fine. I, it, you don't want it to be too fast or too slow. This is a good medium here. So that's about it really. Those are, those are about all the slice settings that I recommend for this part and that I've actually tested and works really well. So here it is uh, printed at those, you know, I keep showing this over again, but it came out really good. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna hit prepare to print. Make sure continuous printing layer by layer is set. One color, one, two, there's a select, so I'll hit okay. And now I have a, a preview of the of the part that's going to be printed and we already have a problem here we have a problem I forgot something so real quick I want to make sure that the coloring is set to active tool head by default it might be set to something like movement or feature type to to actually see the the uh, the which you know have differentiated colors and what the materials are you, you you select active tool head and that's going to show you a good preview and if you look at the, the skirt that we that we were setting up, it's only one color. It's going to be uh, the glow-in-the-dark transparent um, PLA material because you can see that that's the center and black is the green uh, shaded color. So we're going to hit exit. We're going to double-click on color one, and we need to go back to addition. So 
if you look at the skirt extruder, it's actually set to only the right. So we need to make them both. So we're going to hit all extruders, hit OK, and then we can just uh, prepare the print and then hit OK again. And now we can see that it's actually doing the two colors. So this is going to wipe this is going to wipe the material away so that it doesn't ooze over this, the, the, uh, the center part here, the actual part that we're printing. Because that's the main goal here was when you're setting up a dual extrusion print. What is the most optimal way to make a clean print so that there's not a lot of intersecting and a lot of goopy mess? I keep referring to this part because it's pretty clean. So that's pretty much it, folks. Um, from here, we can, we can, uh, we can save the, uh, the tool paths, the G-code to our printer, save it to our SD card, and print it away or use OctoPrint using the, uh, the Sailfish plugin to print that. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the main important thing is, of course, doing a layer height so that it's actually pretty high resolution so that it can, um, so that the threads uh, print pretty well. But that's pretty much it. Those are my tips on setting up a dual extrude. This particular dual extruded part. If you guys have any questions about Simplify 3D or setting up your, uh, your profile for your printer, let me know in the comments. And if you're looking for a really pro level slicing software, Definitely Simplify 3D is worth every penny. They have a really active support form. Um, they have a great team behind them and um, they have a lot of cool features, very powerful features uh, for slicing and dual extruding. So there you have it. Um, if you guys have any questions again, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you thought in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. Remember to keep on the catting. Bye guys.